Hey guys, Scott back with a new beer dissection video for you today. Um, let me get right to it, even though I'm going to have it over my shoulder. Uh, from Radiant Pig, which I believe Radiant Pig is in Rhode Island. Um, I could be mistaken. I, I have done another Radiant Pig beer. I could have sworn I looked it up. It was near the Newport, Rhode Island area, which I visited many times. Had no idea it was there. Um, I don't recall the beer, but if you look under my... Uh, Beer dissection. Um, there's another beer from Radiant Pig that was there. Uh, this one's a their double IPA. Um, it's called Count to Ten Double IPA. And it almost looks like those battle bot guys when I was a kid. Um, I mean, the commercials, the guys would like punch each other till their arms and heads would fall. I guess you, that was, that was like the person who won was the one that knocked the other guy's head off with the battle bots or something like that. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. I don't know if that was the actual name of it, BattleBots, but BattleBots may be that new age one that they're doing with the uh, engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering uh, competition we saw on TV. It's coming at 8.5% alcohol. Um, what does it say? It's been 10 years and we're still rolling with the punches. This anniversary double IPA. So this is our anniversary double IPA. Um, and again, pretty snazzy cans, like a lot of them have these snazzy like labels on there, but count to 10 double IP, I guess, because they're boxing and they're looking for the knockout. And like I said, that's at 8.5. Remember, double IPA, regular IPA is five and a half to seven and a half percent if you want to stick to the BJCP guidelines. And then seven and a half to 10 or seven and a half to 10 and a half. So I think it's to 10, seven and a half to 10 is double IPA range, okay? Um, doesn't really tell us what type of double, uh, IPA is it a West coast. Is it, uh, New England this day and age? I'm guessing it's going to be some form of New England IPA and or American IPA, but we'll take a look at it. Um, and that's it. All right. So I'm going to probably have it over my shoulder, but from Radiant Pig count to 10 double IPA. And did I give you the percentage? I don't think I did. Um, oh no, I did eight and a half percent. I'm just seeing it. And Use my nice TQ glass here, um, TechQ or TQ. Um, I would use a, a tulipine, a, a TQ glass if you have these around, something like that. I would definitely not put an IPA like this in a shaker pint. All right, you can. I even had, you know, someone tell me they want to put it in a solo cup. That, that's fine too. Drink it, honestly, drink it out of what you want to. If you want to experience all the pleasurable things about you know what why you spend 20 something dollars on a four pack of these things or at least 15 on a, on a four pack um you want something that has like a nice wide base for some surface area allow the aromatics of the hops to come up funnel out towards the top see how the, the front end is kind of a little more narrow um and you can really take it all in really enjoy it um you drink it budweiser miller light there's nothing wrong with that too i i enjoy those every so often um, but that's when you pull out your shaker pints. All right, so let's crack this bad boy open. Take a look at it. All right. Again, I'm only going to pour out a little bit so I can kind of swirl a little bit for the, so I can pick this up. Again, when I record these, you know, I haven't had this before. Um, so I'm trying to evaluate it while, you know, I'm talking to you guys. So in, in a semi live format, um, so again, that's weird. I, let me pour a little more aggressively. I thought I was gonna get a little more head on then than that. All right, maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture at the end like I usually do and have it tagged on my shoulder after a few minutes in the video. So you, if you see the vid picture over my shoulder looking more pronounced because right now looking at this one and this glass is perfectly clean. Um, I only got about a quarter of an inch. I, I poured it pretty aggressively, a quarter of an inch of head on there, really not much. I mean, it's, and it's really very thin on top, okay? Actually, the head is, is, is quite abysmal, especially, um, and there's no canning date on there. Um, yeah, the, the head is really bad. Um, the color kind of gives me this, you know, dark straw, like, you know, medium gold kind of color. Um, you know, it's got that haziness to it, like as if you were expecting to be drinking a New England or hazy, juicy IPA. Remember, I've said it many times in my videos, you know, sometimes they'll use oats. I don't know what the grist is on this. 
but they'll use oats and malted wheat, things like that, that will bolster the haziness and cloudiness in New England IPAs and the juices. But you know what? I mean, I'm just really, I mean, I'm actually quite disappointed in the head on this. Again, I don't know if I just didn't pour. I try to pour pretty aggressively. I don't, uh, usually if anything, I, I pour a little bit too much head. I'm waiting for it to settle down so I can do the review. But there's almost like this murky, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not picking up any aromatics. Um, you know, when you get oxidation, there's a compound called trans 2 nonanol, which is like a papery component. Sometimes you'll get malt shift, things like that, which I don't want to go down that wormhole in this video. I've talked about it in other videos. If the beer is oxidized or aged, it would, it would have helped if, I got to check the other cans I have if, and I'll try to put maybe a little thing pop up on the screen if it turned out that I found out that this was an older can because um, the glass is definitely clean, okay? Because sometimes if you have, don't have a beer clean glass, you'll lose the head a little bit. Um, but I don't have the head. And it is, you know, looking a little bit more, you know, I don't want to say brown. I mean, it's definitely not brown. It, you know, you'd have that amber, but there is that little bit of a brownish hue to it that sometimes when you have these IPAs and why you want to drink these fresh is you get oxidation of the hot matter on particulate. Besides the malt shift, and sometimes you'll get the papery compounds, not every time, but you'll get the papery compounds. Some of these beers will taste like honey, things like that with oxidation. But the hop matter will start breaking down because essentially it's like vegetative, right? So it starts breaking down, you start getting browner. So I won't say this is brown, it's kind of like a, a darker straw, maybe a, a light gold, but there is that little bit of kind of murky, you know, beigey kind of looking color on there which doesn't look very appealing to be honest with you okay there's a lot of other ones that don't do that and again even the, the head is really looking pretty crappy here all right so let's take a sniff of the aroma god it's really very subdued here um not bursting in the aromatics um Maybe a little bit of orange, um, tangerine. Um, the malt is actually kind of like bread crusty, which you wouldn't expect in a beer like this. I'm, you know, I'm, expe I'm, I'm hoping when I don't drink this, I'm not getting like butterscotch caramel malt shift character to it. But, you know, maybe there's like a little bit of like a fruit punch kind of smell. Slight, again, you know, maybe some peach, um, cantaloupe, okay, white grape. But again, on, on the malt, I'm getting that a little bit of a little darker malt-like aromatics that I would get on something that is not supposed to be probably New England or American IPA. So I'm getting a little worried about this when I start tasting it, but we'll see. I could be completely off. You know, I, I reviewed a beer a little while ago and I don't know if I'm, get, I'm getting biased off of that other beer, but. A bubble gum kind of smell aroma to it. Um, anyway, guys, let me just get right into this and taste it. And cause again, I'm not really that impressed with the head. Something's not right here. Um, I mean, it's, you know, cold, carbonated, medium carbonation, kind of medium body, actually medium to medium low body. It's actually, that's why I said it's a little thin. Um, very thin. Um, more... Again, I'm getting this little darker malt character than you would expect in this, like bread crusty light toast, which you know you're usually looking for like doughy white bread, but yeah, you, know, you try not to judge it that way. But even on the hop flavors, it's just not very strong. Like on the aromatics, very subdued. I mean, it's I'm not gonna say. Yeah, 
you know, I'm not picking up paper or anything. I'm not just something that's not right. I don't know if, it, if it's shifting a little bit, how long ago this was canned. It would really help. And I will try to put a little thing, you know, that sometimes I put on my videos. Um, but the malt's like, even if you said like almost graham cracker, like uh, on the, you know, they're on the hops, on the flavor. Again, it's it's kind of like a uh, melony, maybe slight peach. But in the aftertaste, it kind of gets very flat, just like I got much of nothingness in there. I'm not really ra uh, loving this so far. Um, again, if I got an old one, I mean, sometimes what happens, to be fair to the brewers, they make beer, it's in the bright tank, They whether they're putting in kegs, bottles, cans, sometimes it's got to go to a retailer or distributor, uh, and then to the beer store, The re I'm sorry, the distributor, then to the retailer, and they're sitting on their shelves and it's sitting there warm and they're not putting it in the refrigerator. So you start picking up, you know, ages the beer out a little bit quicker. Now, so even though I'm not getting kind of paper, there may be a little malt shift going on here. When I say on the color, it's starting to look a little bit of that beigey brown type of color. I'm losing, like I said, the hop aromatics were not very pronounced that you'd expect in a double IPA, right? Um, I think double IPA, the IBUs also get up around 70 to 100 uh, IBUs. It can be rusty on that number. Um, it's just, and it's, it's drinking kind of thin too. It's just, you know, it's 8% alcohol or whatever it may be, eight and a half, whatever I said. Um, I expect this bursting with more fruit. Maybe I'm getting a little peach. Again, maybe can maybe a little melon-like cantaloupe. Then I get kind of that, and there is a little bit of a I'm getting like a little puckering, not not the bitterness. The bitterness takes a little while to settle in, but like even a touch of stringent. Um, my mouth, I'm getting here. So guys, I'm not really not really loving this. Um, I'm not going to flush it down the um, sink like my four loco video. Like <laughs> those of you that watched that one, uh, that was quite funny. Um, that was my only sink flusher that I, I think since starting this channel but this is body's thin i mean this one i probably finished the can because it's not like undrinkable it's just double ipas you're paying big money for you want that hop aromax we're not getting it here you want the bursting hop flavor I'm getting, if anything, maybe a little bit malt shift. Like sometimes you even get like honey notes to it. And that may be what I'm kind of perceiving. I have other, like three more cans of this. <clears throat> it's not going to help me in this video, but I, we may be getting a little bit of malt shift there because that's why I'm like perceiving the malt being a little bit more, um, uh, you know, more darker malt character than the lighter malt that this would usually have. So again, it may have nothing to do with the beer. This beer fresh may have been fine. And again, I'm going to try to post it on this one. If I, if, if I do have a can that has the date on there, but I'm very suspicious of this one. So, you know, I, I won't, I won't flog this one anymore, this beer, but let me just revisit one more time. Let me t tell you some of the positive attributes. The head we didn't like. Yeah, there's, there, listen, there, there's some light fruit, like I said before. Maybe there's a little peach, cantaloupe. You know, some aromatics there as far as like, uh, like I said, sometimes it's like bubble gum, cotton candy kind of aromatics. Um, and the malt though, again, I would be usually expecting doughy white bread and I'm getting kind of like crusty, uh, even graham cracker kind of note, uh, light graham cracker notes on it. 
and really the head is not sitting very nicely here at all. Um, so I'm, again, I'm really not, not loving this. Um, I get the bitterness again. Yeah, you know, medium pronounced. Um, Fleets away, but again, I'm not really impressed with the with the hops. So, anyway, guys, overall drinkability, enjoyability. Listen, I'm going to drink the rest of the can. I'm not going to flush it like others. I'm not going to overall drinkability. I'll say a C plus C. I'll just say C. Um, compared to other IPAs, I got to bring the grade down. This is like a D. Um, I, I, I'm really not, especially double IPAs. You're paying. For the amount of hops these brewers are using, um, because that's what they're charging you, because it costs them a lot of money to brew this beer, it's passing down onto you. And I just, the aromatics on this is not great, and the flavor isn't great on on the uh, on the hop flavor and aroma, which you would expect this to be dominating with that being a double IPA. So anyway, guys, um, today's beer dissection was from Radiant Pig, count to ten, double IPA. To be fair. I believe my other video is more complimentary. Um, and also, I, I, I got to believe 9 out of 10 times, if you drank this beer on tap or at the brewery, it probably is a lot better. You know, there may be a, a handling issue from distributor to retailer to sitting on the store shelves. Um, once I got it here, mine went right to the refrigerator. But who the hell knows? Uh, I'm, I'm very suspicious that this is getting like a little oxidized. Um, sometimes it's apparent, sometimes not as apparent. Um, so anyway, Radiant Pig, count to 10, double IPA. The cans I have here, at least this can, is not wowing me. Um, you can be your don't judge. If you disagree, or you have a fresh can. Um, again, I don't even know if this is how fresh this is, maybe the way the beer is. I got to look at the other cans and make sure. Um, but... Anyway, to my next beer dissection video or beer video in general, guys, have a great day. Sorry about the bummer here. Take care. Bye-bye.